Hey everyone, the layout optimizer I developed is finally in a basic usable state. So this video is going to be an overview of the interface. You can find the Windows installer linked in the description. Um, even though I did develop this on Linux, I'm having issues building the app image. So that's not available for now. And I don't own a Mac, so you're also on your own there. Now this is very much an alpha release. You know, I know what's going on, but I haven't received any feedback to, you know, if things are confusing, documentation's missing. So that's what the purpose of this is. If you do run into issues, uh, please let me know whether it's a comment or uh, opening an issue on the GitHub page. That would help me out to make this better for other users. But let's get started. So first there's an autosave indicator and the location of the autosave. You can also load your own config if you've already created one. Otherwise, you can choose a preset. I've tried to make them fairly sensible so that you won't have to change much. Otherwise, you can start completely from scratch. Optimize, that's the button that you'll press once you get everything sorted out. The first tab is the layout. Hopefully, it's pretty intuitive. There's a drop down where you can select a QMK key code. And then there's a lock button, which basically tells the optimizer to ignore the particular key. This is useful if you want to keep keys in certain familiar locations. For example, I like using space on my left thumb and backspace on my right thumb. So I enter the key codes there and I lock them. You could use this for, you know, if you want to keep control C, control V, control X in their positions, you could lock those. You can also use it to reshape the layout. So this is meant to be a Ferris sweep preset. And the Ferris sweep only has two thumb keys per hand. So you can use the lock to basically lock blank spaces to those unused bottom row keys. Second button is a symmetry indicator. Certain key codes people like to be symmetric. Shift is one of them. Open and close brackets is another. So basically this tells the optimizer that this shift and this shift should remain symmetric in the layout. They could change positions, but they will remain symmetric. One thing you can also do is indicate layer switches with this LS. Uh, key code, which is followed by number. It basically says that this key will activate layer one. And then in layer one, you'll see the corresponding key code be placed to ensure that the layer switch is valid, essentially. This layout is meant to mostly be left blank because the optimizer will automatically fill it and randomize it with the key codes that you want to optimize for. And there are some options for that later. The interface, this interface is mostly beforehand, you can impose constraints that you want. And then afterwards, you can inspect the layout, make small tweaks and try to re-optimize things. That's the layout tab. Next, we have the effort layer. So this lets you specify the relative effort it takes to type a certain position. So generally speaking, you want to have an effort of one for the most accessible keys. In this example, we have ring finger, middle finger, index finger in the home row style being you know, very accessible. Also thumb keys tend to be very accessible and then everything else is scaled accordingly. One plan with the UI here is to automatically color code the effort so that it's easier to see the high and low effort areas. Next tab is hand assignment. So basically you say this key, I'm going to use my left hand, ring finger, middle finger, whatever to type it. This is used to calculate if certain typing sequences are favorable, like if they're alternating hands or if there's rolling involved. 
Or if the sequence is unfavorable, like you have to use the same finger on the same hand twice in a row. Next tab is the copy pasteable version. I typically edit the keymap.c file in QMK. So this is just to make that a little bit easier. And you can choose whether you want the layer switches to be one shot or momentary. One limitation of the optimizer is that it treats one shot and momentary layers as the same, even though their typing behaviors are slightly different. So that's just something to keep in mind for now. I don't really use other layer types, so they aren't currently supported, but depending on the feedback I get, I might look into them. And then we have a help tab to just try to keep this app more self-contained. You know, again, because I know everything that's going on, this help tab may be incomplete, so I'm relying on feedback to kind of fill in the gaps. And then depending on the types of questions I'll get, I get, um, I might add an FAQ section as well. So that's these tabs. Um, now I can talk about the options. So hide flags. This is just to kind of reduce the visual clutter so that it's easier for you to look at the actual layout that you generate. Then we have a save as option. So this will save the layout, the effort layer, the hand assignment, and then all the options into a configuration file. I'm using Tomal. That way you can share it. Uh, again, if you run into issues, uh, sharing the config file with me will be very helpful. You can also manually compute the score just to get an idea of if you make you know a small tweak, does that improve or uh, make the overall effort worse. It will display an error if it can't calculate the score. So that's you know one indication of what to fix. Right now it's saying that it can't find the letter E in the key map. And that's because the optimizer hasn't placed anything there yet. You don't have to worry about that uh, because again, the optimizer will randomly populate the key map. Here we have key code options. So I'm not going to go over all of these. Uh, the tooltips hopefully are fairly descriptive. And I've also tried to just leave you with reasonable defaults so that you don't have to really change much. Some important things to note, so the data set paths, basically you need to provide your own data sets and you want to point the app to folders on your computer containing text files at the top level of the data that you want to train on. This example, I have just a couple of novels from Project Gutenberg and then also the Rust programming language book. And then you can modify the weight of the data sets. So if you program more than you do creative writing, you might increase the weight of the Rust book. Um, and yeah, the rest of the options, again, tooltips. Um, and then real quickly, when it comes to the scoring options, there's hand alternation, because some people prefer the rhythmic back and forth that comes with alternating hands. And then there's finger rolling, because some people prefer kind of the, the flow that comes with a roll. So you can tune the relative importance of these two actions to you. And then there are other options to kind of tune how favorable these are, you know, how much of a, a perceived effort reduction do they result in. Again, tooltips. But yeah, that's kind of the, the overview. Um, Oh yeah, let me actually do a sample run just so you can get an idea of what things look like. So I'm just going to reduce uh, some of these options so that we're not waiting here for a while. Click optimize. There is a basic text progress indicator here. And then once the app finishes, 
optimizing. There will be a pop-up asking if you want to load the best layout that was found. And also you can see the location of that layout. Click OK. And we see this is what the optimizer found. Just a quick example, THE is a very common trigram. And we can see that THE alternates hands. So that's a little small sanity check that the optimizer was actually doing something uh, and not just randomly kind of assigning keys. From this, you can then make any additional modifications you want, any additional refinements, and then you can re-optimize based on this starting layout where it will not randomly move keys, uh, but rather just you know go through swaps and replaces to try to find a better layout from this starting point. But yeah, hopefully uh, that was enough to get you started. Uh, again, this is very much an alpha release, so if you run into issues, please leave a comment or open up a GitHub issue, and I'll try to address those. I hope that's everything for now. Um, thanks for watching, and have fun messing around.